Hi everyone, my name is Sumit and welcome to this chess video. In this video, I'm not going to discuss about uh, traps as I have always done. This is about end games and end games are something which everybody ignores and um, we are all uh, interested in studying openings and opening variations and uh, middle game combinations and end games are generally ignored. So in this video, I'm going to tell you a very important end game technique uh, or uh, strategy or a method called opposition, the concept of opposition. And if you're a beginner or an intermediate player, and if you want to really improve your chess, you need to seriously consider learning the basic end games. And this is a right uh, technique that you should know, you, all of you should know, so that uh, it will help you in uh, converting uh, probably a drawn end game into a winning one or a winning end game into a drawn. So uh, the difference between half point and one point is probably your knowledge of end games. And it makes a huge difference in the points table when you play tournaments. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. If you like this video and if you like this content, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you get notified of uh, future videos. And you can share this video with your friends uh, who are interested in chess so that they can learn uh, this technique called opposition. So without further ado, let's get so, started. Uh, the board I've shown, this is the opposition position. So what is an opposition? That is the first question we must answer. So uh, the king cannot, uh, king should have at least one square separating them. They cannot uh, stand close to each other. Uh, they should have at least one square, square separating them. And in the concept of opposition, the, the, the side which has to move uh, will have a disadvantage. As you know, in the king and pawn endings and in all endings, uh, the king acts as a uh, attacking piece and it guides the pawn uh, to the promotion square, which is the idea of uh, all endings. Uh, you should promote your pass pawn, push your pass pawn to the promotion square, and that's how you win games. So uh, this is an opposition position, and those who um, this is actually a vertical opposition position. Uh, it, 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 the, the both uh, king is separated by one square. And there is a horizontal uh, opposition as well. This is the horizontal opposition. And uh, uh, there is a diagonal opposition. This is the diagonal opposition. So every time the, the opposite kings are separated by one square. And if black is to move, he has to move here and uh, or probably backwards. Um, here, here or here or here. And white will get an entry to the uh, the opposing, op opponent's uh, position. So we'll look at some of the examples and let's find out how uh, this works in a practical end game scenario. So I'll show you different end game scenarios and then you can uh, you'll understand the concept of opposition to a practical game. And so this is the first position and this position is called the king behind the pawn. So uh, you have uh, two kings and just a single pawn. And um, and this is a drawn position. This is so you have uh, two kings opposite to each other, separate one square. And uh, White has got an extra pawn, and uh, he's try he tries to win the pawn by pushing it. And the king would support the pawn. Pawn. So uh, in this situation, uh, this position is actually a draw with correct play. So I'll tell you why because uh, the concept of opposition helps Black to attain a draw. Uh, through stalemate. So if it is white to move, uh, white plays d6, king d7, and king d5. Now, if you look at this position, uh, this is an opposition position, right? So there is one square which is separating them, which is occupied by white spawn. So there is one move which attains draw, and that both other moves actually loses on the spot. Uh, I'll give you. Uh, couple of seconds to find that move. If, it, if you find that move, you are a, a good end game, play, end game player. And if you don't find that move, just uh, just follow uh, the, the method which I recommend. So I'll, I'll give you two seconds now. Okay, if you have found King D8, then uh, pat on your back, you have found the right move. I'll show you uh, uh, how it is done, King D8. King d7, 
and uh, the king moves to king king e8 e7 check king d6 and uh, uh, white has to play king to e6 and this is a stalemate uh, so let's see the other alternatives if king e8 is played um, king e6 king uh, d8 d7 and this square is uh, not available for uh, the white the black king so he has to move to king, king to c7 now king goes to moves to the white king moves to uh, e7 uh, and there's no stopping uh, the white queen from queening so this is uh, this is winning and uh, go back and if the king goes to c8 for example again the same thing will happen king uh, e6 king uh, to, d, uh, to d8 e7 king c7 and so uh, and this is this is winning so this is uh, the technique so the the idea to remember in this position is very simple you have to move the king uh, to, to this square after d6 king, uh, to d7 king e5 and you have to go back like this and and this is uh, theoretically drawn and king c6 again uh, you should not move, move the king to here you have to move to king, king to c8 and c7 king d8 and king d6 so in the second scenario uh, you can see that the king is uh, the white king is in front of the pawn and in this situation if it is white to uh, black to move uh, white would win because of the opposition situation white would penetrate into the black camp and uh, he would be able to promote the pass so let's see how uh, king to c7 um, king c6 um, king d8 king d6 king e8 and uh, king c7 and a you get uh, this position where the white king controls this uh, queen in square and it is a win and if you go back uh, further and if the king e6 is played the same thing d7 check king e7 and king c7 wins and to further go back, we'll see another alternative for, uh, for black. Uh, king e8, again, king c7, king e7, right. small points. So uh, it, it depends on whose move. And we'll see uh, now if it is uh, black, if it is white to move, then it is a draw. We'll see how. Uh, so we'll see that uh, we have reached the last, uh, the exam, the position of the last example, which I've shown you. And after king d7, d6, uh, this is uh, this is actually a draw because after uh, king d8, king e6, king d7, uh, king e8, d7 check, and king d8, king d6 is a draw. So this is always a draw. So it is important to understand this concept so that you know that uh, this is actually a draw or a win. And it all depends on which side to move. And if it is white to move, uh, the game is drawn and if it is black, the game will be won. In this position, you can see that uh, the pawn, the queen is standing two squares um, in front of the pawn. So in this scenario, uh, most of the time, white wins because um, uh, if it is uh, white to move, king d5, king d7, uh, d4, and now black is forced to move uh, and white gets the opposite um, king e7 king c6 and uh, the uh, white on queens so we'll see uh, other situations also like uh, you know um, king d5 uh, king d8 and white just goes king to d6 and uh, whatever uh, black plays uh, king c8 here and king c7, d4, king c6, king e6, king c7, uh, d5, king d8, and king d6. Now, uh, white can black cannot escape the opposition because uh, either way he moves to king c8 or king to e8, white would gain the opposition. For example, king e8, king c7, king uh, e7, king c6, and white wins. So, we'll see an example same example with black to move 
and uh, we'll see uh, how it uh, turns out. So imagine it is black to move and uh, after king d7, uh, king d5, king c7, uh, king c6, king e6, d4, king c7, king, uh, king e7, and king c7 wins. And uh, here, if uh, black plays king d8, again white would make king d6 and he gets in a position because after king uh, to e8, king c7, and white king always controls the winning square, and there is no way black can uh, you know, stop and white now on winning. So after king c7, d4, uh, king e6, king c6, the same thing would happen in d7. King d8, king d6, uh, after king e8, king d7, and white creates uh, his form. So, uh, this is the different scenarios. I hope you understood the opposition. And there's one more rule which I will tell you. Uh, and after uh, that, is the final one uh, that you have to consider. So, consider this position. Uh, when the white king is on d6, that is on the sixth rank, uh, or um, or the, the the attacking side's king who has got the extra pawn is on the sixth rank, then he that that uh, that person always wins because uh, it doesn't matter he has an opposition or not. So if it is white to play, uh, king e6, uh, king e8, e6, king e8, e7, and uh, the black king as opposed to c7, king e7 wins. And if it is black to move. Uh, it's very easy if king e8, king c7 wins, and if king c8, king e7 wins. So, this is the concept of opposition. I'll summarize it uh, the three points and three scenarios uh, in one final time so that you can understand the concept. Once you understand this concept, then it's very easy for you to learn the advanced concepts of MA. So, finally, so finally, let me uh, help you the three different scenarios. So if the king is two or more squares in front of his pawn, he always wins. If he is only one square in front of his pawn, uh, the side, he always wins if he has the opposition uh, that we have seen in the second uh, scenario. If the king is on his sixth rank in front of his pawn, he always wins with or without opposition. This concept we have seen in the last example. So, um, so you have to practice this multiple times so that you can get an idea about opposition. And uh, it is a very important concept if you want to learn uh, end games and also improve your overall chess understanding. So that's about it. So hope you like this video. And if you like this video, do subscribe and share this video and do like this video as well. And uh, until next time, happy playing. And bye-bye.